Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So it's been a while since we've featured a handheld transceiver on the channel. This one has been sat for a few weeks in the shack, so I thought I'd pop it out. Now this is the Baofeng UV21 Pro version two. Now specifications state that this radio is essentially a tri-band radio. Two meters are 1.25 meters and the 70 centimeter band is supposed to be supported plus a whole load of other frequencies in between. Now, unfortunately, there is no airband support, but it can play your favorite radio station on the FM broadcast band. Now in the box, we have the user's manual, which appears to be written in pretty good English. So a great help for those newcomers to the hobby. Next up is the desktop charger, where you can just slot the whole radio or just the battery into the cradle. Now, for those wondering if this radio can be charged from USB-C, then yep, the battery has a USB-C socket, which I'll show you shortly. The usual accessories, such as a belt clip and wrist strap is also included for those of you that like to use them. Now, interestingly enough, a supplied earpiece with inline mic is also in the box. Now, this has the usual two pin Kenwood style plug, which slots into the side of the radio. Now, even though these are a little cumbersome to attach, they do actually work pretty well. The USB-C cable, which as mentioned earlier, is used to charge the battery. We still have no USB-C programming, so a separate programming cable would be required, which I didn't get in the box, but it just uses one of those cheap and readily available programming cables from the likes of eBay or Amazon. Now, a wibbly wobbly antenna has an SMA style at the bottom, and according to the printed specs, this antenna supports from 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 520 megahertz. Although in my experience, these are never that wide banded. So just check your antenna before using it. Now the battery information sticker states that it's light ion and has a charge limit voltage of 8.4 volts. But weirdly enough, it just states high capacity and no actual capacity value. How bizarre. I guess that we all question that capacity anyway when it's printed on a sticker. On the rear of the battery, under this little flap, we find the USB C socket. Now, as mentioned earlier, this is used to charge the battery. There's a status LED next to this, which glows red when charging and then green when fully charged. The orange color of this front panel does really stand out, and the buttons are fairly standard with a nice click upon pressing them. You can purchase this radio in three different colors, orange as shown here, and then green and then silver. And I actually think there's a black version. On the rear, we can see the full metal chassis along with a serial number sticker, which to my surprise, there is actually a serial number. Now, if you have one of these radios, does your serial number look the same as the one on this radio? I wonder if they're actually all different. Now, what you will notice is that at the bottom of this radio on the chassis, there's a little round stump with a hole in it. Well, this is for the battery screw. The battery on this radio actually screws into the main radio chassis, as opposed to just having that normal spring loaded clips. Now, I only ever see these normally on waterproof radios to keep the seal nice and tight, but the specs do not mention anything about an IP rating. So just be cautious with water. Now down the left side of the radio, there's the PTT button. That's that large orange button at the top. And then just below this, there's three function buttons. Now the top one of these turns the FM broadcast radio receiver on. And if you long press it, the squelch is open momentarily. Now the middle function button, this one turns on the LED torch, which is at the top of the radio next to the antenna connection. And then the bottom function button changes the RF power level from low to high and then back again which actually I quite like, saves going into menu to changing it back and forth. Now it doesn't appear that these function buttons can be reprogrammed within software, so you're fixed with their functionality as they are. The right side flap exposes that speaker mic socket, which can also be used to program the radio using an appropriate programming cable. Now on the top, we have the antenna socket, a white LED, which as mentioned before is used as a torch, a rotary volume control, which also turns the radio on and off, and then a status LED, which glows green for receive, and then red when transmitting. 
Now, when powered on, the radio displays a logo, which actually can be changed in software to your own logo, or you can change it to show the battery voltage. Now, two VFOs are present, which act as a dual watch rather than a dual receive feature. Now, going through the menu system, we find it extremely similar to that UV20L that I reviewed a couple of months back. And all honesty, it kind of feels like the same radio. Now, usual settings are available within the menu, like turning off the beeps, voice prompts, along with a stopwatch, just like that UV20L. Now, I must admit, I much prefer these black dark screens with white writing and colored indicators, but that isn't a reason to buy this radio. Now, programming the radio is very easy, and for this, I had to use the T6 UV series programming software which is available on the MyCore website. Now, channel name can be entered within software and it actually stores within the radio. Now, going on to testing the RF power output with a fully charged battery sees the output of just over 5 watts on the 2 meter handband at around 145.5 megahertz. On the 1.25 meter band at 220 megahertz, we see an output of around 4.5 watts, and then up on the 70 centimeter band, we see an RF output of around 3 watts. This is M0 DQW, Mike 0 Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing the audio on the Baofeng UV21 Pro version 2. This is M0 DQW, testing audio. Audio, 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 1, 2, 3, 4. M0 DQW, over. But all in all, the radio looks like it could be a good radio. Well, until we reach the last part of the video where we test the spurious emissions. Using a tiny SA Ultra, I measured the harmonics on the two meter band first. And the second harmonic comes in at around 10 dB less than that fundamental, which is pretty shocking. We should be looking at greater than negative 40 dB if you don't want to be transmitting on multiple frequencies at the same time. The 1.25 meter band did look pretty good with a drop of around minus 48 dB from that fundamental, so that's kind of passable. However, on the 70 centimeter band, the second harmonic was only around 30 dB lower than the fundamental, which is a shame as I was hoping it would be a lot more. Anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments below if you've got this radio and what you think of it. To me, it's just another one of those radios which looks good, has nice power output, but just fails miserably on those spurious emissions. And in my personal opinion, I would not use this radio on air. Maybe it's okay for listening, but that's about it. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.